Hey fellow rockers, moshers, and the CV vinyl community. I'm J Dub, and today I'm going to be doing a, another CD collection update basically. Uh, since I started doing all these videos, I started collecting vinyl, so I basically now realize I should just split up my collection updates, just do uh, one CD and then later do vinyl. So this would be more or less a uh, CD collection update. I have a fairly big stack, so I'm going to try to rip through this stuff here, so I'm not wasting a couple hours of your time. And so first up, we got uh, Children of Autumn, Something Wild, Children of Autumn's first album. And I am trying to complete my Children of Autumn collection, like fully complete. And I was missing this one, so I figured what the hell, why am I missing this one? Uh, let's get this one up in here so I can finish this collection. So. Uh, we got the first CLV album. I'm gonna assume anyone is familiar with the first Children of Autumn or Children of Autumn in general, so I don't really need to, to discuss too much about it. You know, melodic death metal, full on killer, awesome, fast, energetic stuff. Next, we got uh, December Wolves, de completely dehumanized, and this is from 1998. Uh, very obscure, kind of. It's kind of like a black and thrash actually to be honest with you it is kind of like a deathy blacky thrashy uh almost like a black and melodic death metal if that makes any sense so there is some black and stuff going on there but there's kind of some melodic death metal so very interesting very awesome stuff like it's all just like fast and uh, the vocals are kind of leading towards that blackish side not full on black but you know, there's a bit of that going on, so kind of just that description is probably good enough to know what you're getting yourself into. 1998, black and melodic death metal. Very unique, very awesome. Very heavy, very awesome. I got a newer band, North Lane Discoveries. Uh, I'm not sure, I forget what album this number this is for North Lane, but North Lane is like a metalcore band, we call it. I forget the year on this. 2011. So 2011 metalcore. Uh, I, I do like Northlane. I find they stand out in that newer crop of metalcore bands. Uh, when it turned emo and shit, and a lot of those bands weren't that great, but uh, Northlane does stand out for me. And I, uh, they have they did a they did a singer change after this album, and I really like the singer change that they made. Even though this is a previous singer, but I still uh, dig Northlane. Next up, we've got a really obscure uh, thrash band called Corrupt, the Spunion Field. And yeah, this is just very obscure. I believe they're from France. Uh, did I write down where they're from? No, I didn't write down where they're from. Anyway, um, yeah, this is 1996. Thrash is very fun, upbeat, fast. Not maybe uh, super fast, but you know, fun, upbeat, thrashing. Uh, 1996, yeah, they just. You know, they definitely were riding that groove metal thing that Pantera and all those bands uh, were switched over and were trying to uh, do, and they're not like grunge metal, nothing. They, they are thrash, they are thrashers, maybe crossover thrashers, but really fun, energetic stuff. Check this out if you can, get your hands on it. Uh, we got a new metal band here, we got American Hedgehogs of the Art of War, or the, the War of Art, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, it's actually cool. He's got the original Digipack here way back from when they were touring with Slipknot. So it's like, oh, on tour with Slipknot in 2001. Uh, it's clearly not 2001 anymore. You can't go through that tour. It's already happened 22 years, 21 years ago. But uh, yeah, here we are. Can't, can't believe this is about 21 years old. That's freaking weird, right? And uh, yeah, you know, I, I love my new metal. I, I'm not sure why it's such a hated genre. Maybe, you know, it is what it is. That's a whole discussion on itself. I'm not going to try to get into that thing. But uh, this produced by Rick Rubin on American Records. You know, it's got the American uh, Record logo there. So it was produced by Rick Rubin. So that does have that raw. You know, Rick Rubin, like, he never overproduces his stuff. It's always like this very raw, organic sound. And that's actually totally what this is. It's a very raw, organic industrial metal industrial new metal i don't think there's a whole lot of industrial elements but there is some industrial new metal stuff going on there and this is kind of just more of a nostalgic thing where i just realized i didn't have it and if i could pick it up five ten bucks sure let's get it 
And yeah, it's kind of really no kind of nostalgic stuff for me back in the new metal era and things like that. Now we got a complete turn roll reversal of genres. Uh, Emperor's 1997 album, Anthems to the Welkin at Dawn. And I'm, I don't go super deep with my black metal, but Emperor is good stuff. Emperor is good shit, shall I, shall I say, you know. Um, not as keyboardy as uh, Dimmu Borger is. There's a little more straightforward black. There is some atmospheric stuff, not overly atmospheric, or I wouldn't like it. So they are more of a straightforward black metal band. And yeah, there's Emperor. I'm sure anyone is fairly familiar with Emperor at this point. Uh, and uh, same thing with Children of Bottom. Like, much like Children of Bottom, I'm trying to complete my In Flames collection, where I want the entire In Flames collection in complete, uh, complete, sorry, rather. So uh, I am trying to fill in my, my In Flames gaps, the ones that I don't own. So this is a, a gap filler, trying to complete my In Flames collection, a sense of pur purpose from 2008, I believe. Yeah, 2008. And. I meant to play this before I did this uh, uh, this collection update video. I tried to play everything and know what I'm talking about, so I'm not half-assing it. But, you know, it's in flames. I, I do really like this album. I know I really like The Mirror's Truth, Disconnected, Alias, so, uh, Condemned. You know, there is a ton of great songs on here. You know, your standard in flames. Although I, I talked to one of my friends. He said he didn't like that one. But, you know, that's here nor there. Uh, I dig it. Next up we got uh, Mushroom Head, Righteous and the Butterfly. Uh, Mushroom Head is kind of like an industrial metal, industrial new metal fan. Uh, I actually don't own any Mushroom Head. This is my first Mushroom Head I own. I should own that the iconic XX album, but I don't. Uh, I've been meaning to get that. Anyway, this, this popped up just from like a local seller cheap for like, I'm not even joking, like three bucks and I ordered this and I can't remember what else I ordered. I got this and something else for like under ten dollars, two albums for under ten bucks shipped to me, right? So, um, I just figured hey, it was pretty cool and actually I, I do kind of keep up with my mushroom head and you know, know the, and then go through the albums and know which ones are good or bad. This is one of the better mushroom head albums actually, it is really good. It's heavy and things like that. And we got Amon Mark's newest album, Berserker, from a couple of years back now. I think we're going back to 2019, which is three years old, even though probably about two and a half years old. But uh, up to this date, it is the newest Amon Um Much like the Children of Autumn and, Amon and COB, I'm trying to complete my Amon Mark collection in full. I want the full collection. So I was just missing a few. And I got Berserker from a local seller at a decent price. So I figured let's just jump on it let's get the let's get that while it's cheap uh yeah, it's showing a little bit of the digipack rip and not even though it's kind of on the outside for this thing it's kind of on the outside anyway it just goes to show you that these fucking cheap cheap digipacks are not not made to withstand time right um, kind of just like old vinyl if you look at old vinyl from the 70s and 80s like the outer, the outer edges are all banged up and things like that it's just Except for, the, you know, even these digipacks are just really, really not made to endure. Anyway, it's a whole topic of itself. There's a piece of plastic in there. Oh, <laughs> okay, I didn't even, the seller sent the plastic in and I didn't even remove it. It's funny. But, uh, anyway, going on with the Modern Marth, I do prefer the album before this, John's Viking. Berserker is good. Um, I connected more with John's Viking, but I still like a Modern Marth, all a Modern Marth. It's a Modern Marth, you know what you're getting yourself into. They're very consistent. So that album is good, it's consistent, it's great. Sorry, I'm, that's, that's the outside of my nose, not on the inside. Anyway, and, uh, we got the Drowning Pool Sinner. I realized I didn't own Sinner and I probably should own it. It's a pretty, uh, I'd say like, you know, icon not iconic, but you know, uh, a must have for new metal sort of thing. So this is 2001 and it's just a full-on incredible album the whole incredible is cut the whole album is uh like uh, i don't know what i'm trying to say the whole album is catchy like catchy catchy new metal right you hear the songs and you're familiar with the choruses and just they're very very good good well-written songs right we're getting us some death metal here we got sorceries 
1991 Blood Chilling Tales death metal album. So again, I don't really need to go too much into it other, other than saying it's 1991 death metal. You know what you're getting yourself into when you're like, if you play any early 90s death metal album, you know it's just gonna have that sound that groovy heavy death metal sound that was going on at the time and i totally love that era and, and all the death metal from that era is just spot on amazing my cat almost knocked my camera over thanks a lot cat uh, <laughs> good thing i caught it before it did fall over and i thought i was doing some death metal in a row but it must have it must be a couple of months later down the road but uh, this is really, it still remains the serpent. It's gonna zoom in. It still remains the serpent. And oh my god, uh, this is amazing. Super catchy melodic, super catchy melodic metalcore. Almost like Killswitch Engage. If you do like Killswitch Engage, check these eyes out. They have a lot of death metal influences. Like I know the last song, Avalanche, is just like full-on metalcore death metal mix just really cool stuff but you know some of the choruses do have some clean singing right and then they're like really catchy so just really catchy uh metalcore 2007 and i've been listening to this album since it came out and i never owned it and i just realized hey i could buy this for five bucks and it kind of just hit me one day hey what, what what am i doing why don't i buy this like it is one of my more favorite albums of the mental core genre so i just figured hey if i could get it for five bucks why not what does it stay on the front here the serpent dancing with the enemy and stay captive must have been kind of like singles for them sort of thing next up we got an amazing kind of kind of obscure melodic death metal band the dusk fall uh this is a double album release where you got frailty and the source so there's the frailty cover and then there's the source cover so it is giving you covers of both the albums that are included here i don't know if it's going to zoom on the sign but it's just frailty and the source so it's kind of got the track listing one's going this way and the other one's going this way and it's a metal mind release so all those metal metal mind releases are numbered so i got 644 of however many they're doing and there is a sticker on the, and yeah you guys might think this is funny I, I normally wouldn't stick a sticker right in the front but that that space was not filled with anything exciting so i just thought the sticker looked good there looked good in a classy way so let me know if you think that looks good but anyway i, th I think it looks good there so i did stick it there not the end of the world again i never plan on selling my collection so this is mine forever I'm going to stick the sticker wherever I want. I thought it looked good there, like classy. And, you know, I think it does, right? It's not like overtaking the picture or anything like that. So, anyway, th these guys are spot on aggressive melodic death metal. Right? Just like just like early in flames, just like early children of bottoms. This, the bottom, these guys are spot on melodic death metal. Like, very cool stuff. And if you're not familiar with Dust Fall, check them out. They are really cool. Next up, we got a uh, old school heavy metal band from uh, what year is this? 1983. Yeah, 1983. Silver Mountain, Shaken, Shaken Brains. Um, you know, some some of it could be labeled hard rock, but it's heavier than hard rock. Like there is some heavy metal aspects. So I would say it's like a hard rock heavy metal mix. Very cool. You know, nothing groundbreaking. Obviously, there was a thousand bands and a million bands coming out that were just doing standard heavy metal so this does fall in line with the standard standard heavy metal uh this was on ebay cheap for 10 bucks and it is a metal mind uh metal mind reissue sort of thing so it is numbered so i got number 129 of how many they printed and the cool thing this is a swedish band so it's like a swedish heavy metal band right so that's cool and uh I actually had no idea. I didn't even know these guys existed. It was one of those things where I'm just browsing through the eBay seller list. Uh, you know, the Music Fact Magpie, or I forget what they're called. Anyway, uh, anyway, so then I'm browsing through and I see it for 10 bucks, and I'm looking at the cover. I'm like, it doesn't look old, but ah, maybe it is. So I do kind of research and find out it is. This is 1983, and 
I kind of uh, was able to spot that out pretty cool. Even though like the, the name, the lettering doesn't look from the 80s, although it is. So uh, that's cool. Check it out if you are looking for something, some more deeper, obscure, early 80s metal. 83, right as the thrash wave was coming on. So they probably would they probably would have recorded 82, 83 right before that thrash wave hit. So. Next up, we got Acid's uh, third album, Engine Beast, and Female Fronted. And if you're not familiar with Acid, you definitely uh, know who Acid is if you do like your speed metal. So basically a speed metal version, a uh, female speed metal band, well, female fronted speed metal band. I believe it's 1985. Is right down there? Yeah, it is. It's 1985. And uh, Acid is from Belgium, so we got uh, nice world world metal here and uh yeah speed metal and very fun cool upbeat fast stuff oh my stack of cds just fell over now we do got a couple of death metals in a row i seeming to get some more i seem to bulk up my early 90s death metal so we got uh Therion's first album of darkness from 1991 and uh, Theory on is from Sweden, so we got another Sweden band, just like that uh, Silver Mountain band, another Swedish band. And right after this album, I believe, or the next album after, Theory on did change their formula, they changed their sound, they moved away from the pure death metal and more into the progressive metal, kind of just like sentenced and things like that. So, um, the first Theory on album is just pure death metal, relentless death metal, awesome stuff. Cool, cool cover. Love that cover. Great cover. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure who did it. I forget. It might have been Dan Seagrave. It might have been a Seagrave cover. I'm not sure. Sorry, I forget about that. We got another 1991 death metal album, Massacre from Beyond. This is obviously a, re a Digipack reissue. Uh, looks a little pink on the camera, probably just because my uh, lighting's turned up or whatever, but uh, yeah, great, re great earache re-release re from 2018 on Digipad, and uh, it's got uh, Terry Butler on uh, bass, which is Terry Butler's been in a slew of death metal bands, and uh, so this is what have been Terry Butler's first band. Uh, great stuff. We later joined Six Feet Under, which I do love my Six Feet Under, so that's why I did mention it. I know some people hear Six Feet Under and they go, Bleh, but I, I like Six Feet Under. I, I like that. Just very simple, groovy death metal, but this is a little more extreme death metal. This is your, your spawn on early 90s death metal right there. So, yeah, or 90s death metal, you know what you're getting yourself into. And another death metal. And although, although Nate Palm deaths did start as the first couple albums did start out as a death grind band sort of thing on this third album here this third album they just they kind of draw the grindy aspect and just well and they had better production so this is the album where it's a turning point where the production just got way better and they did veer more into just more pure death metal so uh yeah napalm death's uh, third album harmony corruption and uh, this is more sound recording, so this is right at the beginning of that uh, groovy death metal, great production death metal scene. And yeah, uh, more sound there. Uh, Scott Burns and Morris sound. And definitely, uh, if you do like your death metal, I'm sure you already either know it or own it or whatever. And it's funny, I thought that was 1991, but it is 1990 on that, so. Uh, was a great early death metal release. And I know when this album did, did came out, it got bad reviews, and I'm not really one to like care about reviews and like if people some, say something's bad, I make my own decision. I'm not just gonna base my decision on on what's popular, what's not popular. I make my own decision, and for me, I thought Catharsis Machine Head's Catharsis rules. I thought it's awesome, I thought it's fun, upbeat, and feels kind of fresh. It actually holds up it holds up well now. Uh, just listening to this a couple days ago, and I was thinking, I was like, I have no idea why it got bad reviews or why people didn't like it. I think people just prejudged it off one or two songs or whatever, but 
This album's fucking awesome. It's actually one of my more favorite Machine Head albums, to be honest with you. So, if you kind of just wrote off and checked out the reviews, and it's like, oh, the bad reviews, it must not be good. I'm telling you, it's actually really good. Or maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm biased. I have no idea, but I connected with it. I thought it was great. I thought it was fun. I thought the songs were great, memorable songs, and I, it sounded like Rob was kind of having a good time with it. Um, yeah, I, I don't really see why it was so bad. Machine Head is fairly consistent, and even from those first couple of Machine Head albums, you know, they they mix some new metal and groove and thrash in there, so when they're still doing that 20 years later and people are like, oh, it sucks, well, that's what they always were originally. They always were that band, so I'm not really sure what's going on with that. Anyway, here nor there. We got, uh, this came in at the USA Trading Center and I scooped it up because I was really happy to see it. We got Deliverances, I think, second album, Weapons of Our Warfare. This is an awesome thrash album. Very cool thrash album. You know, I'd love to say go out and get it, but kind of good luck on that thing. You know, you might have to pay a little bit more for something like that. Uh, from 1990, and yeah, this is just really awesome thrash metal. Uh, I'm glad that it came in. I'm glad I'm the first one to have seen it. I'm glad I'm the first one to notice that it did come in used at the USA Trading Center because someone else would have bought it before me if I hadn't seen it. So I'm, I'm glad I'm the first one to see it and buy it. Uh, well, you know, I'll just first want to buy it that it came and used, right? There's only one copy, so you have to jump on it real quick or else someone else will get it. So, so I got it instead of someone else, and I'm happy that I got it instead of someone else. I guess they do consider themselves like a Christian band, although uh, I'm not sure some of the lyrics are Christian-y, but it's not overly Christian-y at all. Like, if it was overly Christian-y... Um, well, again, I don't really care about that kind of stuff. Good music is good music, and this is good thrash. Again, none of the song titles have, it's like, it's not like Striper or nothing, where they're, where they're like, um, you know, it's not like Striper where they're like throwing it in your face sort of thing. So, you know, but it's some of the some of the song titles like This Present Darkness, Weapons of Royal Warfare, Flesh and Blood, brought Bought by Blood, slay the wicked greetings of death so um you know they say they're christian but they're not like throwing in your face you would never know if you didn't look into it so uh deliverance 1993 thrash, great stuff next up we got uh gojira's from sirius to mars or yeah from mars to sirius i flipped that around but uh, it's actually really hard to get because it was on prosthetic and i guess they haven't really reissued it very much and uh, for whatever reason, I wasn't able to ever get this before. And because Gojira, The Way of Flesh, in this album is becoming very hard to get. Um, yeah, so it did come in used, and I figured, hey, I better get this before it becomes even harder and harder to get in the future. And I actually am still looking for The Way of Flesh because, yeah, that album is really difficult to get. And any times I have seen it, I was an idiot and passed it up, so. I'm kind of an idiot for passing that up when I do see it. I'm kind of regretting that, but so we got that one. I am still looking for Way of Flesh, and then I do have every Gorgira. And next up, we got the Dark Angel's third album, Time Time Does Not Heal, from 1991, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, it is 1991. And yeah, as you guys don't know, or if you don't know, it's Gene Hoagland's first band first band so it's first full-time band so to speak and I do prefer I do prefer this Dark Angel album over the one previous I don't know uh, I I don't I, I do like the previous one I forget the name the title of it just off the top of my head here but uh, I do prefer this one much better uh, I know some of the songs do get a little long like some of the songs are like eight nine minutes sort of thing but it is just really great thrash it doesn't like when you are listening to the eight, nine minute song, it doesn't feel like it's eight or nine minutes. Like it does like, it does move along quite well, quite, quite, quite great. And obviously there is, being so long, it is gonna get a little technical progressive thrash at times, but I don't know, I, I really connected with this album. I love it much more than this. I think the second one's called Leave Scars. I think the second one's called Leave Scars. Anyway, I do much prefer this over that second one, so that's why I got this one instead of the second one. And I do own the first Dark Angel already, so I didn't need that. And then we got the last one here, uh, last one for the collection update, is uh, All That Remains, the, the 
order of things from 2015. I am a big All That Remains fan. You know, they're just very, uh, very, I don't know what the, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, catchy, very catchy metalcore, right? They have, they'll do fast metalcore and then they'll have kind of soft, melodic choruses. So it's like very catchy, stuff that you could sing along to sort of thing. And yeah, I'd like to complete my All That Remains collection, so I'm kind of one step closer to that now. And there we go, I dig my All That Remains, and uh, we got our collection update. Oh my cat just totally knocked over my mouse, but anyway, thanks for watching, subscribe, mosh, and see you later. I'm going to have to hit my stop on my... The cat was terrorizing everything, this, this one. She knocked over my camera, she knocked over my uh, mouse, anyway, see you guys. So.